Syngenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Striped breast is a bit of a, a different animal in that um, if you're out and you see striped breast developing at a relatively early stage in the crop, so let's say as you're getting into that five to six leaf stage or even to, into stem elongation, it's such an explosive disease. And if you're seeing symptoms scattered throughout your field, still maybe at a, at a fairly low level, but they're there. Um, in that situation, especially with a susceptible variety, so something that's listed as a, a very poor or poor in the variety guide, you probably want to get on uh, putting on a fungicide at that point in time to slow it down and then planning on hitting it again as the crop is coming into flag leaf emergence or into heading to protect the upper canopy leaves. Uh, because it's so explosive in nature, it's a bit of, bit of a different animal compared to some of the other leaf diseases that we would deal with. So, uh, but with stripe rust, uh, traditionally, uh, we've started to see symptoms. If you look at talking to my colleagues like Dennis Gaudet and Byron Pachalski at Lethbridge, it comes in usually in June, mid-June, uh, and you start to see symptoms building towards the end of June and into July. Here in central Alberta, again, our experience and that of my colleagues, uh, Kikwan Shi with the province and Krishan Kumar, normally we don't see symptoms till usually in the early part of July. And reason for that is that traditionally the pathogen, the striped breast pathogen is overwintering in the Pacific Northwest. So southeastern Washington State, northeastern Oregon, and northwestern Idaho. So it's overwintering there on winter wheat. It's building on the winter wheat. And depending on what kind of an epidemic you have, if you have a significant epidemic occurring in uh, uh, April, late April, and into May uh, on the crop there, you have the risk that you've got inoculum, so rust spores, the Rito spores that can be carried on wind currents from the Pacific Northwest. Within one to two days, they can arrive over the Lethbridge area uh, from that, that source location. So uh, typically the rust will blow in and you might not see that till late May, early June. It'll start to build and you know, threatening crops in Southern Alberta and then moving up into Central Alberta uh, as you get into to mid to late June and early July. Uh, if you've talked to Dennis G'day and Byron Procholsky and my colleagues in southern Alberta, 2011 was a very different animal. They had um, overwintering of the striped breast pathogen. So that's basically if you've got a mild winter, you've got the potential for overwintering. So as soon as that winter wheat crop starts growing again, you have the potential for disease development. So it's important to scout. So in the fall with your winter wheat, and if it's a, a variety with a very poor or poor rating, you want to be on top of that crop, monitoring it for symptoms, if you notice symptoms. Uh, some preliminary research that we're involved with, with By uh, Brian Barris and Ducks Unlimited, um, is suggesting that maybe a fungicide application in the fall, which has an effect on stripe rust, can actually slow down and reduce the amount of stripe rust that you have the following spring. Uh, as that winter wheat crop starts growing again. But we've only got one year of data at a few sites, so we're, we're anxious to see what's going to happen uh, here this summer and, and, uh, and the next year, because it's a three-year trial. So scouting, monitoring, if it's in your winter wheat, going out the following spring, monitoring the fields, uh, and, and basically, again, if you've got a poor, very poor variety, planning on, on, on applying an application. So that's southern Alberta. We have some fairly mild winters, but we can also see overwintering here in central Alberta. And, and a lot of that work's been done by my colleagues, Kikwan Shi and, and Krishan Kumar with the province, uh, where they've demonstrated overwintering in winter wheat here in, in central Alberta. So it, it all depends on what the winter's like, but also in terms of, do you have a rust epidemic building on that winter wheat in the fall? And then is that followed by a fairly mild winter? which can lead to the potential for overwintering and some fairly early season development. So the other key thing with stripe rust in terms of management, uh, because it's a disease that's blowing in 
crop rotation is really not going to be an effective tool. So you're really looking at largely variety resistance and fungicide application. And there's some very good varieties out there, so consult the most recent variety guide as far as uh, 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 varieties with, a, in some cases, with a good or even maybe even a very good rating. Try to use those if you, you know you've had issues with stripe rust and anticipate issues with stripe rust in the future. However, you may not have a suitable variety that fits your production system or, or the markets that you're looking at and you, you have to go with a variety with a poor or very poor rating. If that's the case and you know you've had stripe rust in the past, you want to maybe make sure that you, you scout those fields on a timely basis and be prepared to put a fungicide on uh, as needed.